Welcome back everyone. I'm Travis with Linux Academy. In this lesson, we're gonna start working with some of the security practices that was discussed in the previous lesson. But before we go and create our second profile, we're gonna go and implement a test. Execute docker container run, use the rm flag. This is going to go and remove the container once it's stopped. Also use the int flag and the image we're gonna be using is alpine and the command is gonna be sh. So first off, just to go and demonstrate things, I'm gonna execute who am I? And as you can see, I'm root. Next, we're gonna execute the following command, mount slash dev slash sda1, and we'll be mounting this into slash temp. As you can see, even though I'm root, I don't have permissions to mount dev sda1 into temp. And this is because of the default seccomp profile. And the same thing happens if I go and execute swap off dash a. Go and exit the container. Rather than using the default profile, we can go and customize our own. Start by going and creating a new directory. Execute make dir dash p seccomp slash profile slash chmod. Go and navigate to that directory. We're gonna be executing a wget to go and download the default seccomp profile from the Mopi project. There will be a link in the description of the video. If I do an ls, you can see we have default.json. Let's go and take a look at the default seccomp profile. If we scroll down here to system calls, this is a whitelist of all the commands that we can run within the container. So if we go and remove something, we're no longer allowed to go and execute it. For example, we're gonna be removing chmod. This will go and remove our ability to go in chmod files. Okay, so let's go to line 52. This is where the whitelist begins and we're gonna go and remove chmod and fchmod, these two right here, so. All right, now we can go and save and quit. We're gonna be creating a new container, so execute docker container run. Use the rm flag to make sure that the container is deleted once it's stopped. We're gonna be using int. Now we're gonna be using the security op flag. We specify secop, and we're gonna be setting it to dot slash default dot json. So this is gonna be using the current directory to read this profile in. And again, we're gonna be using alpine. Okay, we're now in the container. And try executing the following command chmod plus r on slash user. As you can see, this operation is not permitted, so we're no longer allowed to go in chmod files. Go and exit the container. Next, we're gonna start working with capabilities. Now there's two things we can do. We can go and add a capability or we can go and drop it. To do this, we'll be using the cap-drop flag and setting it equal to the capability that we wanna drop. Likewise, we can do the same thing by adding one using the cap-add flag and then again, we'll be supplying the name of the capability that we wanted added in. We're gonna be dropping the make node capability. So before we go and drop it, we wanna go and test it to see if we actually do have access to it or not. To do so, we'll be executing docker container run, again, using the rm flag, as well as the int flag. We'll be using alpine as the image and sh as the command. Execute make node slash dev slash random two, and we'll be using c one and eight. Okay, as you can see, we have successfully executed the command. So we're gonna go and exit out of the container. This time we're gonna go and drop the make node capability. Execute docker container run, use the rm flag, use int. This time we'll be supplying the cap drop flag saying equal to make node. We'll be using the alpine image and sh as the command. Now we are dropped into the container. And if I go and try and re-execute the make node command, this time we don't have permissions. Go and exit the container. To get a full listing of the capabilities that you can go and add or drop, there will be a link in the description. Now we're gonna go and take a look and see how we can go and limit the amount of resources a container can consume. By default, a container has no resource constraints. This means that the container can go and use as much resources as the host kernel scheduler allows. In this example, we're gonna go and limit the amount of CPU and memory our container has access to. Execute docker container run, use the D flag, and we're gonna go and name this container resource-limits. We're gonna be introduced to three new flags, CPUs, memory, and memory swap. All three of these flags is gonna put a limit on those resources. CPUs limits the amount of CPU access the container has. Memory puts a limit on the amount of memory that the container can consume, and memory swap limits the amount of swap space that the container has access to. We're gonna be setting the number of CPUs to a half of a CPU. So this can be a decimal, so 0.5. For some metrics, we need to supply a unit. And this is what we're gonna be doing for both memory and memory swap. 
we can use B for bytes, K for kilobytes, M for megabytes, and G for gigabytes. For memory, I'm gonna be setting it to 512 megabytes, and then for memory swap, I'm setting it to one gig. The image we'll be using is the weather app that we pushed up to Docker Hub. So supply your Docker Hub username slash weather app. Now we should be able to go and inspect our container to see what resource limits have been set. So execute docker container inspect resource dash limits. Almost towards the very top, you'll see that we have CPU shares, memory, which is basically using a half a gig, and then our nano CPUs, which is using half of a CPU. Also, we have our memory swap, which is set to one gig. The last thing I'm going to introduce you to is Docker Bench for security. This is a script that goes and checks dozens of common best practices around deploying Docker containers to production. We're going to be creating a one and done container that is going to be using the Docker Bench security image. The container is going to go and run a series of checks against our host. And the result of the check will either be a pass or a warning. When we go and create this container, we'll be introduced to a few new flags. So execute docker container run. We're going to be using the rm flag because when the container is done, we want to go and delete itself. We want to have int for interactive and tty. We're going to be using the host network and we're also being introduced to the pid flag. We want to make sure that we're going to be using the host pid. Another flag we're going to be introduced to is user ns, which is user namespace. And we're going to be setting the user namespace to host as well. We'll also be using cap add. So we're going to go and add a capability, which is going to be audit underscore control. The auditing control capability enables and disables kernel auditing, changes audit filter rules, as well as retrieving the audit status and filtering rules. We have a single environment variable, which is Docker content trust. By default, Docker content trust is not set, and we'll be talking about Docker content trust in a future lesson. We have a few volumes that are going to be mounted. So we're going to have var lib being mounted into var lib in the container. Var run Docker sock is also being mounted into var run Docker sock. Userlib systemd is being mounted over to userlib systemd. We also have slash etsy being mounted into slash etsy. And we have a single label being set, which is docker bench security. The execution of this container is going to take a bit of time because it's going to be running through all the security checks. Once the check is complete, we can go and scroll through all the information that is being returned from the check. Down at the bottom, we have the total number of checks that were executed, and then we have our score, which is four. The result of each check is either gonna be info, note, pass, or warning. The checks that we're gonna be the most concerned with are the ones that return back as warning because these are the things that we need to go and address. That's all I have for this lesson. Go ahead and mark it complete.